So after nearly 20 years of Sonic the Hedgehog, I'm going to be my first review. I think it's about time that we started round about here, and also we have Sonic Generations just round the corner. But without further ado, let's start with the game that he first appeared in. It's time for a review of Sonic the Hedgehog 1 for the Sega Mega Drive. So here we are, Sonic the Hedgehog. Just recently made his 20th anniversary, but before we review this game, let's have a quick trip down memory lane to see how this pesky son of a hedgehog was introduced to our home consoles. In 1988, for three years Nintendo and their Wii Plus Mario have been the hype of video game industry, but for anyone to compete, no one could withstand a chance. As Sega released their 16-bit console with the Sega Mega Drive in Japan and Europe and the Genesis in the US with a super fast blast processor, not even that could withstand Nintendo's market share. In 1989, Sega decided to put their high-speed processor to some use by creating a campaign for a new character and game much speedier than Mario. As many submissions come in ranging from a rabbit, a dog, an armadillo, a bear, a man in pajamas and finally a hedgehog. With one of the entries submitted by the creative mind of Nod to Oshima of his character submission of a hedgehog with Sega Blue skin with a name called Mr. Needle Mouse. In terms of features, this blue mammal could curl up into a ball and use itself as a weapon towards enemies. Also, the man in pajamas would be the outline of Dr. Robotnik, an evil scientist with an IQ of 300 with an ambition to take over the world. Later on, the armadillo design would be recycled to create Mighty the Armadillo. Plus, for UK viewers, you can find a comic strip in the creation of Sonic, in the very first edition of the Sonic comic. Don't forget the speedy shoes is bought by Michael Jackson and Sam's are... Shut up, Jay! I'm narrating! Anyways. In terms of producing a wealth for this blue character, there was only one person to turn to, Yuji Naka, who has already produced many successful Sega games. Eugene turns to his next project, using a lifelong ambition for speed to create a game none ever seen before. Naka's new project with a speedy element lacks one important element, a character. As Naka and Oshima joined forces with a few characters to need a mouse, for example, scratching the idea of a human girlfriend called Madonna, and the idea of a rock band? What on earth were they thinking? But the final tweak was a name change, and Sega's hope for success was born, Sonic the Hedgehog. As for a story element, you must travel through six different areas and stop in the evil Dr. Robotnik from stealing six magical gems known as Chaos Emeralds. On the 23rd of June 1991, people across the globe saw Sonic the Hedgehog waggle his little finger on our television screens. As your blue hedgehog, you must pass through six different zones, each containing three acts and defeat Robotnik. But just because Sonic was competing with Mario doesn't make this a complete copy and paste situation. Gameplay, well, it's just your normal 2D platformer. Controller wise, use the D pad to move left and right, A to jump, B to jump, and C, well, jump. But what this game stands out from the rest is Sonic's speed, and there's nothing more enjoyable than speeding through levels with crap loads of scenery passing by you. Also throughout your passings are objects and enemies, which you must either collect or destroy. This can arrange from spikes and badniks, metal robots created by Dr. Robotnik to help him rule the world and kill Sonic. Also there are springs which can increase your speed or send you backwards to the start. Red being the most powerful and yellow not as strong. Also there are monitors which can contain helpful goodies along your adventure which can arrange from 10 rings, speed shoes which give you speed for extra few seconds, a blue shield which can give you an extra hit without losing all your rings, a 1-up which rewards you with an extra life, and finally, invincibility stars. <laughs> it's so pretty. And also there's the famous gold ring. With the use of gold rings it's almost like Mario's mushroom, except you can collect more than one. With at least one ring, Sonic can take another hit at the cost of losing all of his rings, so make sure you have at least one ring with you. Sonic Speed is your best friend in this game, as long as you use it correctly. You need skills! By holding down on the D-pad, Sonic will curl up into his ball form, which can be used to increase speed while going down a slope, and it can also be used to pwn bad nicks. I have to say, Sonic 1 certainly does use the colour coding of the Sega Mega Drive very well. It's definitely more colourful than other games I've experienced on the system. Also, the music tracks are pretty unforgettable, but the whole soundtrack is pretty catchy. Green Hill Zone, the very first level of the game with a music track just as remember as Mario's Mushroom Kingdom level. Many colours and areas to explore, filled with crap loads of speedy slopes and 360 loops. 
Marble Zone. Just imagine a brick wall in front of you after all that looping. There's hardly any speedy sections, and there's more hazards that will kill you that you can probably handle. Spring Yard Zone. Green Hill and Marble blended together. Some loops, but some slow platforming. Labyrinth Zone. Labyrinth Zone is the only water level in the game, and it's also where we find out that Sonic can't swim. And there's no speediness anywhere! Apart from slides. But if you want to make it less painful for you on the first act, then follow this shortcut. While coming towards this section of the level, there's a switch that can open a door. But if you simply go back up to this section, there'll be a floating platform that can sail you to the other side, practically skipping half the stage. Well, that was easy. Starlight Zone, and we're finally back to some high-speed platforming, much more than Green Hill. Scrap Brain Zone, every bannock from each zone coming back for a groupie to pound your face in. Also at the end of the third act is an epic battle with Dr. Robotnik, which can range from big balls setting you alight, impaling you, drowning you, dropping things above you, and of course crushing you. Once you beat him, you can free your animal friends and progress to the next zone. At an end of an act before the third, a Mahusif Gold Ring will appear if you collected 50 rings or more. And here's when we're introduced to special stages, which you must travel through a maze to reach the end to be rewarded with a Chaos Emerald. Collecting all six will give you a good ending to the story. Overall, Sonic the Hedgehog became exactly what Sega needed. Later on in its release, it was bundled with the Sega Mega Drive, which increased sales dramatically and was also the reason why it beat Nintendo. Now, I'm considered more of a Sonic fan than a Mario fan, but I enjoy both franchises. If there wasn't a Mario, there wouldn't be a Sonic, and I can't thank Nintendo enough for that. But I will say this now, if you haven't played the original Sonic the Hedgehog, it's available on all types of systems, ranging from Sony, Microsoft, iOS, and yes, even Nintendo. So do yourself a favour and play this game, it's well worth your time, and if you're getting into the franchise now, this is a good place to start. I'll give this game an 8.5 out of 10.